as we get you ready for South Carolina baseball. Once again, South Carolina finds itself in need of a salvage on Sunday as they host Texas A&M looking to get one out of three against the number three team in the country. Yeah, we talked on Friday. you got to play your A game to beat these guys. We've played okay, but, boy, they, they don't give you anything. How important is it to be able to get one game? If you've already lost, you know, on a Friday and Saturday, just to be able to say, okay, like we didn't get swept, we won a game against a really good team. You know, that, that it's really, really big. And I, I think people on the outside don't understand that really either. Because at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, when we're getting put in a regional in, in the SEC tournament, they don't look at how many series you've won. They look at how many games in the SEC you've won. So those like, Game threes, when we've already lost a series that we win, those are really, really big wins with baseball being a momentum game. That, that's huge going into the next week. Here's one tag to deep right field. Montgomery will just turn and watch. It's off the top of the wall. They are calling that a home run. Ethan Petrie finally gets into the action with an opposite field blast that just cleared the yellow line at the top of that wall. And the Gamecocks have a first inning lead by a score of two to nothing. Leadoff hitter in the third, and he has gone on strikes. Becker comes back with the same changeup, and that was a butte. Targotch waves at it. And he lifts a drive to deep center field. Breaking back on it, he looks up, it is caught. Petrie will tag and jog home. The other runners will tag and advance to second and third. And Dalton Reeves with a sacrifice fly. Win and run, come to the court. Full count to La Violette. Payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. And you can put Spurs on this one. The Gamecocks salvage Sunday once again. Defeating the Aggies by a score of 6-5. to five. Carolina holds on to get a win against the number three team in the nation. Snapping the three-game losing streak and putting something polished on the end of a tough week of baseball. Yeah, absolutely. We've kind of vowed to, if we get to the our backs against the wall on Sunday, I mean, that's when we're playing our best. We're coming after you with everything we have. We're not backing down and just playing with a kind of a chip on our shoulder, you know, the whole time. And we're trying to kind of convert that into Friday and Saturday. To be able to salvage a game we get to other teams, I mean, that's going to be huge coming down the stretch, you know, to, to say we've never gotten swept. Grew up coming here, like, watching guys hit homers, and now I'm the one that is hitting homers sometimes, and kids are coming to me. Like, my dad always points it out. I was like, hey, that, you were that kid 10, 10 years ago. I mean, you're watching now. So I try to be the, the best remote model that I can be, such as, you know, Grinder was to so me growing up. Big Gamecock fan, my whole family's Gamecock fans. I grew up coming to Founders. I was actually here for the 2010-2011 run. I came to a bunch of games that year. Um, I used to make these foldable things with all the players and all their stats and stuff. So I'm, I'm a huge Gamecock fan growing up. My mom and dad, they went to App State. My dad played baseball there. Uh, he's a pitcher. And then my grandfather was uh, captain of the football team at Citadel. And then my brother's the shortstop at the Citadel now. I have a little sister who's a freshman in college. She's a volleyball player at Anderson. So we, we are family full of athletes. Were you allowed to not play sports? No, it was pretty much mandatory for me to, for me to play a sport of some kind. He didn't care what it was. He, was. he pushed me towards baseball. My dad pushed me towards baseball. I mean, I think I had a bat in my hand when I was like two. But I mean, it was pretty much, you're gonna play a sport, you're gonna be an athlete. And so I just, I fell in love with baseball, so. Out of high school, I only had one offer, and it was D2 to Erskine College, which is in the middle of nowhere, but I love that place. I always have such a place in my heart for that place. COVID hit, and we all went home and everything, so I went back my freshman, my sophomore year, but freshman on the field. Had a good year, and then I hit the transfer portal. I got a call from Elton Pollock at PC. He was my first call. He said I had just got off the field throwing BP and had to give you a call. So I love PC, I love P. He really developed me into the player I am today. And then going into my senior season last year, last fall, I decided to enter the grad portal because I had one more year. And I was hoping, wishing that I was uh, get a call from Carolina. I sent a bunch of emails out. I had highlight reels. And then Monty called me. And I think the next day I was here on a visit, just checking everything out. They were practicing. To be here, to be recruited. I mean, I met Kingston. He's like, you're going to be a Gamecock or what? I mean, it's a pretty special moment. I mean, it's was kind of a no-brainer for me to, to be a Gamecock.
I was going to ask you about your faith, so your walk-up song is a Christian rock song. So tell me about that and, and the role that plays. Um, I mean, that's that's my foundation, man. Whenever I'm going through something, I mean, I go to Jesus. He's always there. He's always listening. He's always with me. And I, I'd love to be able to have a, a Christian song, Blared and Founders. I've had multiple people come up to me and say how, how cool that is. So to be able to you know give glory to Him at all times whenever I'm playing baseball, it's, it's really special to me. I wanted to be somewhere where I would play, but because I, I committed in, in the fall last year, Messina wasn't an All-American yet, so it was kind of in my head like, okay, I'll go in, I'll compete and everything. And he obviously had the year he had last year, and I was like, well, I'm going to go compete, I'm going to have fun. I mean, I'm going to learn a lot from Cole Messina. I mean, best catcher in America. I'm going to learn a lot. I'm going to become a better hitter under Monty, better catcher under King as well. So, I mean, it was just... At the end of the day, I mean, we're trying to go to Omaha, and I feel like if I can contribute any way that way, either behind Cole or at first or wherever I need, it's just I want to be a part of it. I woke up to a text from King saying I was going to start today, and I immediately jumped out of bed. I wasn't tired. I wasn't. I mean, it was like I got kicked in the gear real quick. Pretty nervous, honestly, but it was kind of that nervous ex uh, excitement. It was more like, okay, what if I mess up? It was like. Man, I get to start in Founders today. Like I'm, I'm an SEC ball player. It was really special to be able to start in Founders as well as play against those guys that I've spent two years grinding with. Lane in that same spot, 15 yards out into the grass. This one is hit high and deep, and that is gone. Another three-run homer for Dalton Reeves making the start against his former team, and I do believe the two three-run homers will put you in the conversation. I didn't know the starter, he was a new guy, so I was just kind of looking for something in the middle of the zone I could hit, and I mean, he hung a breaking ball, so I, mean, I think I hit it pretty good. Biggest thing, I was just trying to do what I can to help our team win. I mean, obviously those are my guys, but I still want to beat them. I uh, couldn't let them have that over me. <laughs> You dream of it, you know, being a kid, growing up, seeing, you know, 8,000 fans, and you get to play in front of them. It's, it's, it's a truly astonishing feeling. Like, you just, it's surreal. You got you to gotta really take it in. I try to be present at all times and really remember these moments and try to be able to take everything in, you know. For the eighth consecutive season, the South Carolina Gamecocks have made the trip up I-77 to Charlotte to take on the North Carolina Tar Heels, and we are so happy to be here with you at Truist Field for this matchup. That stadium is sweet with the Charlotte background to be able to catch back there. I mean, that was a really cool moment to be in a pro ballpark and catching for the Gamecock. 0-2 grounded to first, and the only play will be for Harbor to go to the back himself, and Gavin Casas comes through again. SU peeks at the runner at second, and now pitches, nears a ground ball to Nolan. Underhand tip, throw to first, rack him up. Second double play of the night, 4-6-3. SU says thank you very much. Gamecox work around the leadoff walk and the fielding error and keep the one to nothing lead. See if we'll chase, see if yeah. you get a call. No, I like it too. Payoff pitch. Swing and a miss, got him anyway. Roman Kimball strikes out the side here in the bottom of the fifth inning. A one. Hit well. In the gap to right center. That's going to the wall. That will score the go-ahead run. Dylan Brewer sticking three bases. The cutoff throw comes towards third, and he is going to be safe. Third baseman wants a replay review, but regardless of how that turns out, it is Dylan Brewer putting a charge into one. Takes a deep breath and pitches. And that is strike three, Cole. And you can put Spurs on this one. Connor McCreary with a big strikeout to close things out. And South Carolina defeats North Carolina in a dandy here in Charlotte. Two to one is your final score. What a pitching performance from the game pack. Those are the, the fun games to watch for me, obviously, because I, I get to see how hard everyone works. And guys like Connor McCreary, that work harder than anybody, and going out there, Roman Kimball, like him going out there and, and doing what he did. It's really cool to see those guys that are working so hard succeed. Let's make this a special week. Let's make this a special week. So we know where we're going, right? Yeah. 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 
For me, it's more like, like I'm a football player playing every Saturday, right? I have one day to do what I need to do for this team, and obviously, if I don't get it done, it hurts really bad, and I have to think about it for a whole nother week. But if I do get it done, it makes the next week a lot easier. The middle side of the baseball has is, is always been my strong suit. Obviously, I'm not the guy going out there throwing 100 by people, but I'm the most competitive person on the field at, at all times. I truly believe that, and I want to be that person for this team, and I'm in a position now, being a starter on the weekends, to, to be able to do that. Being a starter on the weekend in the SEC, it, it, it's a lot more, you're doing a lot of stuff on your own, more so, you know, your workouts, your throwing, a lot of that is more on your own, and you have to be self-motivated. It's definitely been a process throughout my whole career here. Even into my freshman year, obviously, coming back from Tommy John, you know, I had like 13 or so innings, and that was truly a blessing to be able to come in in that situation where I did. And, and last year, you know, I was going from the bullpen to starter and, and back and forth. That was a little tough on me, obviously, but it, it definitely helped me grow into, into what I am now and prepared me for what I am now. And m what take me through that start and what happened from you personally and then just how that game went. So obviously baseball is a really, really tough game and as we get throughout the season, scouting reports are getting better. You know, there, there's more video on me so teams can better prepare for me and I think honestly they, they had a really good plan for me. I didn't have my best stuff which didn't help and they succeeded in what they were trying to do and then we kind of realized that going into last week to, to Florida and we kind of changed our pitch plan. They've ended our season two years in a row. That's the two years I've been here. So we know what that series means to us and our fan base, and we know the feeling of losing to them. So winning that series was really, really big for us. Obviously, we had a massive chip on our shoulder. Regional, this is a rematch of that ticket puncher to get the Gators back to Omaha for the eighth time. That one is lifted into right. Ty Evans to the track, to the wall, and it is gone. A home run for Parker Nolan, his third of the year. Thomas is step behind the bag, and third everybody else pretty much straight up. Fly ball into right field. Ty Evans battling the sun to the track, to the wall, and another solo home run. Even those are your two base runners. 0-2, strike three call. And Eli Jones gets out of it, and the Gators lead. That Friday was a lot of fun coming off of that A&M game. I'm sure there wasn't any added pressure, but uh, I, I felt a little bit more. You know, I had a really good work week going into it. I knew I needed one. I knew how good that, that lineup is, and I think we put together a really good plan, and our hitters came out and hit, and our pitchers came out and pitched. It, it, it was a really fun weekend. SEC average this year. Into the shift. That'll do it. South Carolina takes game one of the series. I mean, everybody talked about, you know, like, hey, this is, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take it to them in their home ballpark. We're not going to repeat history. It's not going to happen. We're, we're better than these guys. We're going to go in. We're going to scrape against everybody. We're going to have our backs against the wall from day one. That one's lifted into right center. Jalen Guy's going to have a look at it, but it is going to be out into Disney Grove. A home run for Dalton Reeves. Extends the Gamecock lead. We threw a change up over the middle, and I was able to put a good swing on it. So, I mean, that put us up, I think, 8-3 to three or 9-3 to three or something like that, which ended up being the 9-8 ball game. So to be able to do that for, for my teammates and to support and contribute in that way was, was really cool. That 10-year-old kid was absolutely going ballistic. Yeah, he was having a lot of fun. 0-2. Bouncing ball to the first baseman. Cassis touches the bag. Series feels great, but doing it in their ballpark, in front of their fans, feels really great, especially losing in their park last year. Last year we were really, really hot going into SEC play and throughout that first few weekends. And although we've won a lot of big games, I don't think we've hit our stride yet. I, I think, you know, things are clicking here and there, but I don't necessarily think that we're playing our best baseball yet. And, and when we do, that's, that's gonna be really fun to watch. Top to bottom, it's unreal. The amount of depth that every team has, it's kind of mind-blowing coming from a mid-major where you only have maybe five, six guys that are your dudes, where on the SEC roster, I mean, you, there's no telling how many you have. I mean, the SEC is an absolutely ridiculous conference. I mean, you gotta play your best baseball day in and day out, or you're not even gonna compete. 
And so I think we're really putting together right now. Our pitching's been phenomenal. Our hitting's really picking up. I mean, our defense is absolutely insane. So I mean, I think we're, we're in a really good spot to, to get on a roll going down the stretch. Just the atmosphere, man. SEC atmosphere is, is next to none. It's absolutely amazing. The fans are amazing. Everywhere we go, every other fan base, I mean, it's just it's awesome to see how much people love baseball. Just walking up to the mound in Founders Park, going against the top five team in the country. Like, what's that like, like right before first pitch and into the first inning? That's one of the better feelings in the world. You know, it's, I, I wish more people could feel it. All the fans, it's a truly great feeling being able to be a part of that and kind of almost feel like you're in the center of it.